In 1918, the conclusion of the Jukichi Harada v. the People of California case broke the barrier of the alien land law of 1913 for immigrants by being the first court case to challenge it and win, affirming the right of immigrants' children to own land, regardless of race, and initiating the eventual appeal of the unjust law. Additionally, the house they won the right to live in, now known as the Harada House, became a national landmark commemorating the lasting legacy of the Harada family's contributions to the Japanese immigrant community. A century before the alien land law, thousands of Chinese laborers immigrated to California. However, their efforts were soon stopped by white settlers who competed with them for land and farming jobs. Their view, that the Chinese were stealing their jobs and contaminating their lives, led to the passing of the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 that ended all Chinese immigration to the U.S. As Chinese immigration sharply declined, Japanese immigration abruptly spiked around 1900. The lack of Chinese laborers combined with the development of citrus agriculture created a surplus of labor jobs, an opportunity for Japanese immigrants looking to start a new life. By the early 1900s, the Japanese made up about half of the agricultural workers in the state, yet they were not allowed the same rights as American citizens. Anti-Japanese groups were formed along the West Coast, such as the Asian Exclusion League and the Immigration Restriction League. Only one of the many bills that reached California's Congress passed, restricting the Japanese to their own schools and neighborhoods and promoting misunderstanding of the Japanese people. Because of this, Roosevelt entered the Gentlemen's Agreement with Japan in 1907. This stated that if Japan stopped issuing passports to Japanese laborers trying to enter the U.S. for a job, then the U.S. would not restrict any other Japanese immigrants. It attempted to calm the anti-Japanese hysteria while staying in favor with the Japanese government, which was gaining power globally. But the anti-Japanese groups continued to push discriminatory laws. By 1912, the Democratic campaign's promises for anti-Japanese legislation became decisive for election to legislature in California, allowing Democrats to gain more seats and win the presidency. This paved the way for the passage of the Alien Land Law of 1913, a culmination of anti-Japanese lobbying. Because only Caucasians and African Americans could obtain citizenship under an equally discriminatory ordinance, the wording, aliens ineligible for citizenship, was used in this law as it didn't explicitly target a group racially, and so the law forbade all Asian Americans who couldn't obtain citizenship from owning land and possessing long-term leases. One family who overcame their struggles and later broke the barrier of this law was the Harada family. Jukichi Harada was studying to be a teacher but ended up joining the U.S. Navy and moved from Japan to America in 1900. Three years later, his wife Ken and his son Matsuatsu immigrated to the U.S. from Japan and finally reunited with Jukichi in 1905. They then leased a rooming house in Riverside and ran the Washington restaurant. Eventually, they had more children. However, when his son Tadao died of diphtheria around the age of five because of the bad living conditions in the rooming house, he decided it was time to move out. Wanting a safe, healthy environment for his children, Jukichi Hirata eventually bought a house on Lemon Street, a street in a predominantly white neighborhood of California. Knowing he was not able to own property, being a first-generation Japanese immigrant, Jukichi brought the house under his children's names, for they were born in America and therefore were U.S. citizens. There are multiple barriers that my grandparents faced. The inability to have title to real estate was one. This limited finding properties and then having to undergo a circuitous route to purchase that property. First, they attempted to buy him out, offering him $500 more than what he paid to get him to sell his house. Harada, saying money was no object compared to his children, refused the offer. Meanwhile, the owner of the house, F.C. Noble, prophetically sent a letter to U.S. Siegel Webb asking, Can a Jap, boy or girl, born in California, acquire and hold real estate? The response was positive, meaning neither Jukichi Harada nor F.C. Noble could have predicted the court case that would ensue. After Harada refused to leave, his neighbors created a committee for the sole purpose of kicking their new neighbors out. They hired Miguel Estudio as the lawyer for the plaintiff. W.A. Purrington and Adair, well-respected attorneys in Riverside, offered to head the case for Jukichi. This case was filed under the name of the People of California v. Jukichi Arada in October of 1916. 
It was the first case to test the California Alien Land Law of 1913, garnering local, national, and even international attention. This was in part due to the relationship between Japan and the U.S. after the Gentlemen's Agreement. The Japanese Embassy in Washington, D.C. paid close attention to the trial, believing it shouldn't be ignored by the Japanese government. The situation was dire. If the plaintiff won the case, the Haradas lost their house to the state. The plaintiff's case was based upon the fact that Yukichi Harada had bought a house, but since he was an alien, this was illegal under the 1913 alien law. They also claimed that he had bought the house with interest in the property, which was also illegal. Their case reinforced the racist viewpoints that permeated the law and legislation at the time. During the trial, Purity claimed that the United States Supreme Court has held that any Chinese child that was American-born has the same rights as any other American citizen. Therefore, it should apply to all the Japanese children that are American-born as well. As Sudio then responded, saying that if this statement was true, there was nothing to prevent the state of California from becoming Japanized. With many hearings, continuances, and postponements, the trial eventually ended on September 14, 1918, in favor of the Haradas, when Judge Craig confirmed that the Alien Land Law of 1913 did not apply to children who are American citizens, saying they were entitled to the same rights as any other American citizen under the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. This ensured that children of immigrants who were born in the United States, even if they are of a different ethnicity and culture, have the right to own property, applying to both Japanese and the various other immigrants in the U.S. It also invalidated the idea that Japanese and immigrants shouldn't be allowed to live among white people, undermining systematic racism. A while after the Haradas won the court case for the house, other court cases had been made against the law, since they felt their rights had been violated. Because of the Harada case, other Japanese immigrants realized that they could buy houses under the names of their children legally. This loophole was the only way for Japanese to openly defy the property discrimination against them. This helped them to break the barrier to house ownership. Part of the law was overturned in 1920, and 32 years later, the entire alien land law was overturned in 1952, and this stopped the discrimination against the Japanese people, who were not American citizens, from purchasing houses. Unfortunately, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the government sent all Japanese and Japanese Americans to internment camps, including the Harada family, for being suspected spies of Japan. A good friend of the Haradas, Jess Stebler, volunteered to keep the house in his possession to prevent the government from taking it away. During this time, Jukichi and Ken Harada were in their 60s, and their health was deteriorating. They were sent to Topaz Relocation Center in Utah, where they died behind a barbed wire fence, away from the rest of their children. After everyone was released from these camps, the rest of the children separated and moved all over the country. Sumi Harada, the youngest daughter, was the only child to return transforming their house to give Japanese families recently out of internment a place to stay and start anew. The Harada House stands today as a national landmark commemorating the case and how it broke barriers for the Japanese. In 1977, the Harada House was nominated as a city landmark and had eventually a national historic landmark in 1990, when Sumi Harada received a letter from the chief historian of the National Park Service saying, the house has been found to possess national significance in the history of the United States. The story of the Haradas is now used for academic research and school curriculum materials. The Harada House stands as a lasting landmark, officially recognized nationally to the broken barrier it symbolizes. This case broke the previously unchallenged state of the law and set the precedent for further challenges by other immigrants, leading to the eventual repeal of the Alien Land Law Act and breaking the barrier for future immigrants. The Harada House continues to be celebrated as a representation of the Harada's honorable actions and the fight for the rights of Japanese immigrants.